All right, everybody, welcome back. Tom Cormier here with another episode of Tom's Guide, where I teach you guys everything about sale freaks and everything that you need to know. So if you guys don't know who I am, my name is Tom Cormier, six figure a month eBay drop shipper and coach mentor. I have my own Facebook group and YouTube channel. Um, in this video, I really want to go over something that's pretty important to a lot of people. I've seen it happen a lot in my uh, free Facebook group recently. A lot of people getting banned, um, 30 day bans, seven day bans. They're usually just listing bans. They're not per permanent bans. Um, but that's for Vero violations. And if you guys don't know what Vero is, or if this is, you know, if you're more of a beginner towards this, then Vero stands for verified rights owner. And it's basically like um, a brand that tells you that you can't list this item on eBay unless you have special permission to. And, you know, you really want to avoid items like this. So why is Sale Freaks so good for um, items like this? And it's because Sale Freaks has been around for seven years and they've been amassing a database of Vero that is absolutely massive. A lot of people think that like Sale Freaks Vero is just too in-depth and, you know, it takes out more than like 50% of your items. But I'm going to show you how to get around that. And I do think that is good, at least in the beginning, when you don't really know what the difference is and you can't really figure it out. You know, Sale Freaks will save you in that aspect. And I mean, Sale Freaks manages over 15 million items. So they obviously have the biggest database of Vero out there. Um, I've, I've used some programs in the past where there was almost no Vero database and I was getting Vero violations left, right, and sideways. I've gotten banned myself for seven days. And I've seen my, one of my other partners got banned for 30 days one time. And it's just, you know, it's just a matter of time if you don't take the proper precautions that you might get listing banned. Since I've used um, Sale Freaks, I think I've gotten one or two Vero violations across three accounts. So it's not bad at all. Um, you really want to keep it to a minimum though. And you don't want to really test eBay because they will ban you for it. But, you know, not to scare anybody, this is easily preventable if you do take the right actions and you do work about it the right way. But before I get started into actually how to go about it, um, there has been a lot of people asking me questions on it. I do want to say that there is still the six months, 50% off Sale Freaks um, discount at the moment. So if you are interested and if you want to make this jump before, you know, Q4 has really gotten off, um, this is the time to do it. Um, there is no better time than right now to move over to Sale Freaks. You will get 50% off. And there's a ton of videos that I've already put out there that you will, you know, already have a head start on what to do and how to get your items over from whatever repricer you're using, or maybe start a new account on Sale Freaks or something like that, whatever you want to do. So that's still open. And I also do want to say that in the beginning of this video, I will show you, uh, I'll just probably share the screen right now. It is that they did update the sales hunter function, which I have been using for the past week. I've been seeing some pretty decent results. So I do want to put out another video on that next. And you know, basically what the sales hunter is, is it'll track other people's accounts, whatever accounts um, you put in there and it'll track their items as they sell. And then you can list the items that they sell automatically. Um, I'm going to share my screen real quick on this because I've already brought it up. And basically if you see my screen right here, um, sales hunter has had this new update. So it's always had the max number of items that you're allowed to put in, which was, uh, I usually had set to hundred. I put to 500 now cause I have so many people in there, but you can also change the number of items sold in the last 30 days. Um, so that's basically, or the number, the max number of, no. So yeah, it's the number of items sold in the last 30 days. So that's when you're going to want to change it. If you, if you only put one, then, you know, it's not a guaranteed chance that it's going to sell, but I just wanted to put one up to see how many I could get up right away. But if you, the more, the higher that number is, you know, the less items you're going to list, but the higher chance they are going to sell. So that's, you know, something that you can fiddle around with and tinker with on your own and, you know, figure it out. And then other than that, there's a price range, which I think is pretty cool because I don't want to list a lot of low priced items because it's just kind of a waste in general. Um, so I said seven to a thousand dollars. I don't think anything will go over a thousand and I just really don't want anything under seven. I was going to put 10, but I put seven and then you can change your title source to either supplier or target seller. So that's either putting up the Amazon title or whatever the person you're stealing the item from's title is. I don't always recommend the target seller's title just because of the fact that they could have a misrepresentation in their title and then you're carrying that title over and you're also misrepresenting that item. And with all the new the, the sales, um, the returns um, problem and everything like that where you get 4% extra value fee, if your returns are too high, I don't really wanna risk it. So that's kind of the game I'm playing. So that's about it for the intro. Um, the next part of this video is going to be me getting into the Vero, um, why to avoid it, how to go about avoiding it, how to actually push some of it through. And um, I hope I hope you guys enjoy this video and I'll see you in the next one. All right, everybody. So I'm back and I'm in the listing generator right now, Sale Freak. So if you guys are new to this and you don't know how to get there, you're just going to go to items or you're going to go to listing wizard, then go to listing generator. So all of this is figured out after you basically use the locator to source something. 
and then you input it or you can input files um, just by import. You go to import that way. Any way that you want to do it, then you're going to be in the listing generator. It's going to show you just a list of all of your items or your um, all of your listings that you're trying to generate in bulk or whatever that the bulk scan is. So for this example, basically what I've done is I've used a, I think I it was the electronics section or something of the Amazon warehouse. I scanned it. It didn't really put a lot through and it registered a ton of them as Vero. Um, so this would be a job mainly for someone that has a virtual assistant or if you want to do it on your own, I would put a VA on this where basically they're going to go through and check each one or you can do it, like I said, on your own. But basically, so what you're going to do is click on one of these, whichever one you want. Uh, a lot of this is going to be blurred out, but then I'm going to go over here and there was 518 items that were um, selected and out of those, a lot of them failed. So um, 57 of them would have went through, but they were duplicate items. So I've already had them up before. So I've been scanning the warehouse, you know, a decent amount. So that, that's why a lot of them overlap, but 347 of them did not go through because of arrow. And a lot, that is why a lot of people complain, say there's a lot of arrow out there and that this is the big problem. But in reality, I'd, I'd prefer all the arrow getting taken out beforehand. So I have literally no, no worries in the world. And then if I wanted to go back afterwards, I could. Currently, I have really not done this. I've only done this once, and it's just for the purpose of this video. I forgot to move myself down here. It's just for the purpose of this video, but um, I do see it as something that could be viable in the future if I start running out of potential items and things like that, or if I really start looking into it and being like, wow, a lot of these are getting taken out for no reason. So before you look into anything like this, you want to realize that um, Sale Freaks will break up your Vero into three different types. It's going to be ASIN, and that's just going to be a specific ASIN that's already been like reported as being you know, something that you're going to get in trouble for on eBay. That's something I wouldn't mess with just because those items don't change. And that's a specific individual item. That's not a brand. That's not a keyword. That's just a specific ASIN. So whatever's wrong with that ASIN is going to get you in trouble. I wouldn't list that at all. Um, and the way that you can see it is right here. It'll say brand or a keyword. And then if we find an ASIN one, it'll say ASIN. Other than that, there's brands. So like this Zag, um, if you've, if somebody's already gotten in trouble for listing Zag before, so that's why it's in the system. Um, I probably wouldn't go with messing with a brand. Um, I've gotten away with selling Barrow brands and stuff before in the past, but you also sometimes have like, there's been times where I've sold an item 50 plus times and at one time I got in trouble for it. So it's really, it's just a matter of time sometimes. And a lot of people go, oh, well, other people are selling it really well on eBay. Like, why can't I? I mean, sure, you can go for it, but it's, I, I'd say that you want to always try to mitigate risk in this business. And I, I deem that as a risky behavior. So other than that, what are the what is the one that I would maybe possibly mess with? And that's the keyword. So sometimes keywords pop up in different places for different reasons. Uh, one of the biggest ones I saw when I was going through this list is in the tools section. There was a lot of things that said HP, like a pump, and it was saying what horsepower it was. But that was obviously the keyword was catching as HP as in the computer, which is Hewlett Packard. So right there, you wouldn't have gotten in trouble for that. But that's just something that, you know, it the, the Vero system can't really check uh, what what category it is it's not like a smart barrel system you know what i mean it's just like it's just there so a few things to look for i mean you don't want to go for brand keyword apple watch um although this is zag this brand is also zag right here so i wouldn't go for that um so sometimes not only does the brand register or the brand doesn't register but a keyword will so you want to try to stay on top of everything that way um galaxy shows up a lot and that's because of the samsung galaxy but say it's just something else that said galaxy then maybe you could go for it um so gopro BTIN Hunter right here, Vortex Optics Hunter, Rifle Scope Rings. Um, I know you're not supposed to list anything with um, guns in general, but I might just go for something like this just for, just for the video. It's because it's Hunter is the keyword that got taken out. So if you want to try to force this barrel through, then all you have to do is just click this. Um, we're going to go through keyword LG. I mean, LG is probably not going to come after you for that considering it's all the way down here and it's just listing off a bunch of different brands. So it says compatible with. But anyways, all your listings are only going to have 80 characters, and I bet you this is 80 right here. So this is just a TV wall mount if you look at it. Um, this just says brand Velcro, but this is Velcro. Um, a lot Do not list Velcro. That's a big thing right there. So really don't try to like push through these Veros if you don't know 100% what's going on. Um, so there's USB to there, USB-C to display port cable, the keyword display port. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, iPhone. I do list a lot of things that say iPhone, but I'm going to leave it as it is. Turtle Beach. That's a headset. That's a brand. Um, PS4. Galaxy again. This is Gooseneck tablet stand for Samsung. It's just a tablet stand, so I'd go for it. Um, so basically, as you can tell, this is this is what it is. I, I can go through this for um, a while. This one says Fire. I don't even see Kindle Fire. I don't, I don't know why. What's wrong with that? So I'd push that through. 
other things like that. I mean, it's gonna, it's, I could go on forever. There's seven pages of this, but I hope you guys get the gist of it. Um, and then from there, all you have to do is just scroll up. And then after you scroll up, you're just gonna have to click back to generator. So after you do that, you go back to your generator and then you're just gonna push them all through again. So once you push them all through again, um, I mean, you're just gonna click generate. It's only gonna try to push through the ones that didn't go through. As you can tell, this number keeps going down. Uh, 497, I forget what the actual number was, but then it's gonna show you, you know, all the, these all failed for this and these reasons and whatnot. And then you just click generate. And when you click generate, it's gonna push through the ones that, um, you know, you, you push through for Vero. It could also push through extra ones that were just, you know, out of stock and then they came back in stock or something like that. Other things along the line, when I pushed through the last one before this video, I got like 20 extra items that came out that I didn't expect and as, long, and as well as all the Vero ones out there. So, I mean, that's about it for the Vero type violations. Um, when you're a beginner, I would highly suggest, so I, so I would like to give my opinion on this in all honesty. Um, I don't think I'm gonna go about doing this for a while. I'm going to list as many as possible until when I start throwing up listing generators and stuff like that, like large groups of like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, like maybe only like two or three lists. And if that happens, then I'm going to realize like, Hey, it's mainly all because of arrow. So let's see what I can push through and see what I can't push through. But I highly suggest in the beginning, if you don't have that many items up then it's not really going to be a big problem to you. But once you start getting up past the tens and 20 thousands of items, if you possibly do do that, which sale freaks does give you the ability to do, then that's when you're possibly going to want to start looking through at Barrow and being like, Hey, like this doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. This doesn't matter. I'll list all these. I'll be fine. But you know, I really think that it's more of an advanced topic. Um, but you know, a lot of people have been realizing that, Hey, I switched over 500 items from one of my repricers and now they're all, all like half of them are Barrow. Like, am I going to get in trouble for that? <clears throat> and the main thing is, is if you haven't gotten trouble for them on your account to begin with, then you're probably not going to. But it is like a possibility that over time, one or two of them could happen. And that's happened to me, <clears throat> and that's happened to many people. So it, it's only a matter of time before you get a barrel violation. I'm not gonna say you're gonna not get any, but the main goal is just to mitigate them. And I know that it's an overtime thing with eBay, so it's like a certain amount of violations within a certain amount of time is when you'll get in trouble. So as long as you try to keep that to a minimum, um, then you're good because right in the beginning when I started this I was going all like buck wild and listing whatever I wanted didn't care about Vero I didn't do anything and I also have another video on my youtube channel about Vero how I mitigated it before I used sale freak so uh, that link will be across uh, up above and basically I was getting so many Vero violations I was getting like three four or five a week and that's when I got in trouble that and then after that that's when I kept getting in trouble you get one extra after that two extra after that until it finally came to the point where I was like, I really, I deleted like all of my items almost just so that I could make sure that the, like I didn't have Vero and then started over again. And that was back in probably March, I think, or before March, maybe February. But so that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned how to push things over with Vero and how to go about, you know, mitigating your risk and, you know, what to push through and what not to push through. Um, it's really a judgment call, but I, I think that you should know or at least feel very faithful in what you're doing with um, before you start working with this Vero stuff and pushing things through when, you know, it got stopped in the first place. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The next video should be on Sales Hunter. So I hope Sales Hunter is up and running and working very well for my account. I switched it over to a different account just to try to see if there's more growth would show on it because my other account is already pretty saturated with a ton of items. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one where I hope Sales Hunter is going to blow your socks off.